Hey, have you guys been out there working on your punch game and it just doesn't seem to work out for you? You're seeing everybody else catch fish and you're thinking that they're catching the fish that you should be catching. You're constantly asking yourself questions like, am I fishing too fast? Am I fishing too slow? Do I have the right bait? Am I using the right color? Is my technique that bad? Wait a minute, wait. Don't put that punch rod down just yet. It's not time to pick up the drop shot rod. You're watching In Deep on the Delta, and today we're talking about punching. And today I'm going to really focus in on what I call a, a four-rod rotation or a four-rod strategy that I use when I'm out here punching. It's worked for me for years and years, and I know it's going to work for you. Okay, let's talk about this four rod punch setup. We pull up to an area behind me here that looks like it'd be a pretty darn good place to punch. The first rod I'm going to talk about is not a punch rod at all, it's a frog rod. And you may ask, why am I talking about a frog rod in a punch video? The reason being is that the same areas that are so good for punching are also very good for frogging. And the fact of the matter is, sometimes when you pull up on a mat, uh, especially a mat that is just not uh, full of uh, hyacinth, maybe there's some cheese spots in it, maybe there's some duckweed, the preferred option would be a frog. Also when you have an area like this that has an edge like we have here that has little points and inlets and things, a frog might be a good option to fish the outside. So the first thing that I will look at when I'm pulling up on a mat is to make sure there's nothing way inside there that may not be good to punch that I can throw a frog in or I might decide to just fish the edge. Take a little uh, cast here and I'll show you what I mean. We'll go right into the edge of that and we'll pull it just along the edge just to see if we can get a fish to come out there, uh, an aggressive fish to come out and pick up that frog. So once I take a cast or two to the outside with the frog, I'll put the frog rod up, then I will pull in and I'll start to get into the meat and potatoes of punching. The next rod we're going to talk about is a standard rod, a seven, seven foot two medium heavy to heavy T-rig style rod. And I use this rod as a very light punching rod to either hit the edges once again. On this rod I'm using 65 pound braid. Uh, I have a liter of about 20, 20 pound fluoro on this and I'm using a half ounce weight. I also use a inline hook and a lot of times I will punch worms on the outside just to give the fish a different look. You can, you'll also notice I have the uh, weight peg and I've got a little bead on there. I think that bead gives me a few, uh, few extra bites every now and then. With all my punch gear I am putting as much scent on this as I can. This is a, we'll call it a finesse punch setup, and I'm using this on the outside. So as I pull up, this may be the first rod that I use. Uh, for instance, behind me, we've got this mat out here that is kind of a, an, off, uh, an offshoot of the heavier uh, uh, vegetation. So when I see something like this, I can take this lighter punch rod and go right in, and it goes right through the cover and I can fish that area. I thought I had a bite there. I can fish this area with a worm or a lighter rod. I might make a few casts here, work that bait in there, let it sit, and then I will move back farther into the mat. I generally try to start on the outside and work my way to the inside. Now if there's a day where I'm really catching everything way on the inside or there's a certain mat that I know is has got depth to it then I will maybe start on the inside and work my way out but generally I start on the outside and work my way in. Um, what are you looking for in these mats? If you can get more than one type of veg vegetation, if you have some um, uh, hyacinth along with some duckweed, maybe some primrose, the more stuff that you can get in there uh, the more depth that you have under that. I usually, I like to have 
a little more depth than most people. I really like to have, I'll say two to four feet of water is, is prime. You can catch fish if you just have a foot 18 inches underneath. When you're first starting out, I would look for that two to four feet of water. Uh, that is the prime place. If you pull into a spot like this and you've only got 18 inches, I would pull out and look for another spot that you've got a little more uh, depth to fish for. And you're going to find more fish in that two to four foot depth. So that is the first rod I use. Okay, the second rod that I would use is a little heavier rod, but it's not a heavy punch rod. This would be, it wouldn't be considered a T-rig uh, rod. It'd be a light punch rod. This is a seven foot seven foot five x pride uh, it's rated for up to one ounce i am generally throwing three quarters of an ounce to an ounce on this punch rig i'm using 65 pound braid and i'm going with a standard punch setup now one thing that i will talk about baits let me grab something here i really love to punch these brush hogs and this is a standard brush hog if some of you uh, some of you may already know this, but brush hog makes a, um, a baby brush hog. This is the standard and they make a mid-size. You can tell the difference there. I really like this mid-size. I catch a lot more fish on on this particular bait. So check out that um, mid-size brush hog. Keep it in uh, standard colors and uh, standard bluegill, uh, green colors, uh, crayfish colors, and you'll do just fine. So with this rod, it's going to allow me to get a little farther, heavy, or a little deeper into the cover. So on that first rod, we were fishing the outside right in there. This rod is going to allow me to get a little deeper into cover. I've got a little more weight, and I can penetrate different kinds of cover better with this three-quarter to one ounce weight. And that's all I'm doing. I'm adjusting the size of my rod to the cover that I'm fishing. So if I get in and I'm able to punch into areas like that, and I can get down to the bottom with this lighter punch rod, it's doing a couple things for me. I think the lighter that you go, the more bites you're going to get. And, I, and it's also going to save your elbows and arms and and basically the wear and tear on your body if you are punching throughout the course of the day. And that's another reason that I use the four rods. You know, if you're a young guy that's 20, 22 years old, you can put a heavy punch rod on or a heavy swim bait rod and throw it for eight hours. Good for you. If you've got shoulder problems or you're getting a little older, uh, if you're able to get away with punching with a lighter rod, at least through portions of the day, you're going to be just fine. So this is my mid level rod. It's very light. Uh, it's got enough backbone to pull fish out of cover and um, this is probably the rod that I use 90% of the time. Now the fourth rod in this system is a standard. This is a PAL Max and I think it's a seven foot six heavy punch rod. I am using one and a half to two ounce um, weights on this 65 pound braid and again I, I forget what's on this it's I think called a sand show or something they don't make them anymore this is an old uh, uh, outdated uh, Yamamoto bait but again I'm not really concerned about the baits as long as they're as long as they're green pumpkin they kind of look like a crawdad they'll work now this is the standard punch rod and this is the one that when I need to get back into the heavy stuff I can drop it in there and actually punch through stuff. This is a rod that I want that has a lot of backbone because if I do get a big fish I'm going to have to pull that thing out and just you know horse them out of there. And with that the four rods that we talked about, a frog rod which you can fish the outside, you can also fish cheese mats inside, a finesse style punching rod which is basically a seven foot two um, kind of heavy uh, worm rod that you're going to be using about a half ounce with. You're going to punch the outside as you come in. You've got that mid-level rod that will handle uh, say from three-quarter ounce to an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half if you have to. That's going to be you know one of your key uh, tools out here to punch inside and when you get into the situation where you have to really punch heavy, you're going to need a heavy punching rod. But until you 
get your chops down on punching, you may want to just use the first three rods. Once you start, uh, first three rods that we talked about, you probably already have a frog rod and you have some heavy uh, T rig stuff. Use those. Once you start catching a few fish and you go, I'm really into this punching stuff, then you go out and buy yourself a, uh, a full on heavy punch rod. I use Karate, Shimano Corrado reels, seven to one gear ratio. It's really important to have a rod that you can uh, move that bait back to from, from your strike zone back to the tip of the rod uh, quickly and get it out there. Remember the efficiency uh, uh, factor that we talked about. Uh, it's got to have a drag of at least 10 pound test. Most decent reels have enough uh, drag on them that you can you can uh, lock them down and really horse fish in. One thing that I will also talk about, I don't have any punch skirts on these particular rods. I do use punch skirts. I find that um, I get more bites without a punch skirt, but it seems like I get bigger bites with a punch skirt. So. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how long you should leave the bait in the water and what you should do once you have penetrated the, um, uh, the mat. This is intuition and experience. There are times, and most of the time, most people will tell you, as you drop that bait in the water and you're following it down, if you can keep contact with it, a lot of times on the initial drop, you're going to get that hit. Okay, so we just talked about the standard bite that you'll get when you're punching. It, your bait or your uh, weight drops through the surface vegetation on the way down. It's a reaction bite. It's just bang. Now we're going to talk about a more finesse bite that we'll have to deal with out here. And I pulled this piece of hyacinth out just to show you how long this beard is. Even with a small uh, 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 piece of vegetation that's not fully grown, a lot of times this hyacinth will grow up a couple of feet gets really difficult to punch through but it will hold fish in it but no they have a beard down here and a lot of times this root system a lot of the crayfish will eat the bugs out of this root system so they will be attached on they'll be actually you know holding on with one claw and feeding around this thing so what we want to do a lot of times as we drop a bait through here and it goes down to the bottom we want to pull it up into the bottom of the vegetation and we're going to demonstrate this in just a minute and I'm going to talk about a, a finesse attack with heavy gear. So just be aware of we have this, uh, this beard on the vegetation. So the finesse attack here would be to pitch it out, let it get to the bottom, and just soak it for five, maybe ten seconds. And when you are manipulating the bait, it's more like a shaky head. You're not doing it and pulling it all the way up. You're just touching it, just touching it. So you're going to get the bait uh, moving a little bit, just enough to give it some motion. If that doesn't work, what I want to do is I'll pull up. And when I feel that bait on the bottom of that beard, I'll leave it there. I won't pull it through the vegetation. I want that bait to be sitting in that beard underwater. And then what I'll do is I'll just leave it there. And obviously I'm not going to, I would be working like this, but I'm just keeping it under the, the vegetation and making it flutter and hoping that a fish is going to come up, look at it, look at it. And then when it makes the right move, he's going to grab it. So once I do this, nothing happens I'm going to drop that bait I just released the uh, the spool I'm going to drop it to the bottom one more time shake it a couple of times and pull it out I'll go through that whole sequence throw it in it drops I don't get a, a, a bite I'm leaving it in touch 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 nothing touch 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 nothing I'll pull it up up into the underside of that vegetation where the beard is on the hyacinth I'll touch it a little bit, drop it back down, I don't get anything, I go to the next spot.
Okay, that is the four rod system, guys. That's what I use out here. And I hope, you know, even if you take a small piece of whatever we talked about today and you're able to integrate that into your punching system, uh, I think it'll help you. I love using the four rods, not just four heavy punching rods, but four different rods. It gives me the uh, ability to be a lot more versatile out here, and I think it puts a lot more fish in the boat for me and it keeps my confidence up and again when it comes to a specific technique like this confidence is everything so thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe hit the like button that's important and we'll see you guys out on the water